we decided to give our AI reporter a persona, but that involves an entirely different sort of type of AI. Um, these are called, um, oh my gosh, I've forgotten the word, generative adver adversarial networks, I think they're called, Chris, these adversarial networks that create sort of effectively deep fake technology. Yeah. And that, that, that is another equally fast moving and really impressive part of AI, but we pulled two bits together there to give it that. And it, for that, all we did is we took somebody from the newsroom, our producer, Hannah, and we trained, we, we got a, a quick recording of her, about a four minute recording of her reading essentially random stuff. It happened to be some old scripts from reports that I'd written. She read them out into camera. That was enough to train the AI both on how she looks and her mannerisms, but also her speech. And once we got that, we could put any text we wanted into our AI avatar and it would read a report. So what we decided to do is take the, take the scripts that, the, that Chris's AI, the chat GPT powered AI had generated and plonk that into our AI avatar to get um, a persona to our reporter. And the persona is physically very convincing indeed. Were there any flaws with that side of things? Well, it's interesting. We, we've been playing around with these for a bit and I, it seems to be that like, like the language AIs, these are improving very quickly as well. And some of the early ones we looked at were quite robotic. Um, there aren't particularly good facial expressions. Effectively, they're not very natural. They, they sound and look a little bit robotic. Um, the ones that we used, hey, hey Jen in California, um, we sent them this four minute video and what we got back was really quite convincing. I mean, a few little quirks sometimes. And again, with a lot of these AIs, you can run them once and get um, one output, run them again, you get a slightly different version of that. But it was pretty natural and really quite believable. Right, I've got a clip here that we can hopefully play um, just to give listeners an idea of how the AI reporter sounded. But, as our experts suggest, these initiatives might not suffice given the projected increases in severity of these heat waves. There's an urgent call for robust policy responses, from climate change adaptation strategies to more funds for community cooling centres during periods of extreme heat. I, was, I found it very impressive, actually, what, seeing how convincing... She is. Um, she's been described in the newsroom by one of the management here as, as someone who looks like she might have just graduated uh, from journalism school, which uh, I think we all sounded a bit like that when we graduated, didn't we? Um, but actually, you know, physically it was very convincing. In terms of actually pulling a television report like that together using AI, how did you both go about doing that? Well, I mean, I think, Chris, we, we recognised, given the time and the tools we had at our disposal, we couldn't get the AI to actually complete the entire process, you know, generate video. And also there's a sort of an ethical question there. Do you want your AI journalist to make up the video to go with its report? If it's, if it's based on real events, true facts, it's trying to do a news story, we decided we should use real picture from our archive of, of, of various um, events and things to, 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 to inform it. But also, Chris, it, we, we weren't able to sort of teach um, a video editing software uh, using AI tools. That, that's currently beyond the scope of what we think is available out there. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I would say so. Like, uh, there's a lot of talk about what they call multimodal. That's when we kind of could get like text, video, and uh, let's say images. I guess we already have images, mm. uh, all of this into one model. So what if ChatGPT could generate like videos? So uh, we haven't seen that yet, but I hear mul multimodal is kind of the next thing that could be coming soon, right? Tom, were you impressed with the TV report? I was. I have to say my initial impression was how very good it was at emulating the, the style of writing, you know, short, punchy sentences with, you know, declarative statements and then the, the AI's ability to organise its thoughts in a kind of logical way. And even this kind of, it's a, it's a bit, inside baseball hit but this thing called a piece to camera the bit the reporter says to camera it sort of got the tone of that right and put it in the right sort of part of the report too and I was sort of blown away I actually asked Chris I was like you know how is it so good at doing this something that we we haven't told it how to do right what was I mean I can't remember what you told me Chris why, why it had some sense of, of how to do a tv report given we hadn't told it what one looked like yeah we talked about like uh, I kind of explained like Remember how many thousands of, uh, I guess, news scripts uh, the model has read in its training data. 
So when you talked about like piece to camera, I think it was, yeah. I have never heard of that, but uh, you said that you did quite a good job at actually explaining what a, or emulating a piece to camera yeah. script. Yeah. Yeah, which is, that's our, that's our lingo for essentially talking to the camera um, yeah. in, a, in a TV report. So in that way, it was kind of scary. Oh my God, it can, it can write a TV script like I do. Um, and it did it in 20 minutes. I mean, it takes me considerably longer than that, on, even on a busy news day. Do you know what I mean? So it was impressive on some levels. Where did it fall down? I think what was clear from the kind of stories we got, it doesn't really understand what news is and kind of how would it if all we're giving it is what's already out there in the news. Right. So it, it definitely had an idea of, of, of how news stories should look. So often it was taking two things that were being reported in the news, you know, spending pressures on the NHS plus increased waiting times and saying, uh, you know, take those two things and discuss. But a lot of its ideas were quite what I would say is a sort of feature article, a kind of a step back and analyse two sides of a story. It wasn't able to sort of see and react to things in the news in the way the news reporter does. But I don't think that is necessarily a criticism of the AI. It's more a criticism of the fact AIs currently <clears throat> generate text. They generate natural language but they don't have an awareness of what's going on around them. If you could improve, and there probably are ways you could do that, again, if we were building an AI ourselves, some sort of awareness of what's out there in the news, they could possibly do that quite a bit better.